Hi guys, before we get started, take a look at this quick 20 second interview clip with Bianca Ingles so that we can dive in in today's video theme. Check this out. As a way of keeping track of all the design decisions we make, we, uh, we break them down into diagrams. And you can say, we never make any design decisions just for fun. It has a striking silhouette. It probably came from some extensive sculpting exercise. But in fact, it's actually a, a series of like very clear, well-informed design decisions that have created the shape. What is up, guys? Oh, graphics in here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to learn how to create diagrams in Big's style. They're clean and very effective. Big's diagrams will most likely show the surroundings, and that is because location has a strong impact on how the building is designed. These diagrams are so useful to present projects, and you'll see that they are pretty straightforward to do and give you lots of freedom to create. Now, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I create weekly videos all about architecture visualization and representation. And by the end of this video, if you learned something, don't forget to leave a like, that helps a lot. Good, now without further ado, let's take a look at the process. Alright, so we're going to start over our 3D software and set up the render engine to export a high quality clay render. You can, of course, swap this workflow with your preferred softwares. Bake's diagram most of the time have a parallel projection view, so go to camera and activate it. Then click on the ISO view mode to get a perfect isometric. And finally, reposition the camera. Now we're going to set up the V-Ray settings, so open up the asset editor. And you can go ahead and also open the interactive render window as well. Next, activate the save frame and change the image ratio to square, one to one. All right, it started to look more like Big's diagram, but as you can see, the shadows are too sharp. We need to soften it a bit. And to do that, go to the lights tab and over the sunlight item, we gotta change the size multiplier. The higher the number, the softer the shadow will be. And to check the difference between before and after, you can use the region render option. Usually for eye level renders, that the building isn't that far, or even for interior shots, a value of 5 or 10 is good enough. But since this one is an aerial scene, I would go for a value of 50. As always, add render elements to help you during post-productions. It is always nice to have them around, even if you're not sure they will be used. Oh, and I almost forgot the most important option of all, which is the Material Override. This option will turn all of your materials into a great uniform texture, which is essential for this kind of diagram where you want to focus on the project, but still needs the entire volumetric as part of the illustration. Don't worry if it's a bit too dark like this, we will fix it over Photoshop. Everything that is essential in this render is already set up, so now let's do the final render. Turn off the interactive and progressive render, set the quality to high and increase the image size to something like 2000 pixels or so. Depending on where you place these, you might want to go a bit higher. Then finally, hit render. The render time will depend on your computer specs, but once it's finished, you can left click and hold over this old diskette and choose the double diskette, which will save all of your render channels at once. Awesome! That's all for V-Ray and SketchUp. Don't forget that you can use any 3D and render engine here. Basically, all render engines have the option to create a clay model render. Then just before we move into Photoshop, we gotta export two more images. One with only the lines, just like we did over the previous video. Deactivate the save frame, this step is very important. Select the hidden line style. Then go to File. Export to the image and select PDF. The second image will be out of the actual project. For this tutorial, I made up these two volumes and I left it hidden for the clay model render, but we can now unhide it. Then select everything using Ctrl A, then holding Shift, deselect the project and right click over the rest and hide 
everything else. Now export this as a PNG image. And that's it. We can now move on to Photoshop. Alright guys, before we continue, let me quickly talk about today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering many creative fields such as digital painting, illustration, photography, and many others that are closely related to architecture. With their premium membership, you have unlimited access to join any classes at any time and choose what's best for you. Now, whether you want to fill your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep learning and expanding your skills. So, as you have noticed, I've been posting a lot more videos here on the channel, and I want to be consistent with my productivity. That's why I'm currently watching Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass. He teaches a system that helps track all tasks and projects you've got to do, as well as organize your digital life, which is essential for us in the architecture field with so many files and things to do at the same time. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the video description to get a two-month free trial. So make sure to check it out. All right, now back to the video. So with Photoshop opened, drag and drop the main render into the Photoshop work area. This will create a new document for us. Next, drop in the PDF file and select crop to media box. And before confirming the placement, scale it till it matches the 2000 pixel mark. You've got to be precise here or the lines will be a bit misaligned when you confirm the placement. Then, add all the rendered elements and place them in a folder. We can use a brush to paint any areas that need to be filled, and also use a mask over the lines layer to hide things if necessary. As I said, the render is a bit too dark, so add a levels adjustment and clip it to the base layer. Then, tweak the settings so we can tune down the contrast and make the overall image much brighter. After that, it is time for the lake. So using a magic wand and the lines layer as a base, select the areas where you want to paint. Then create a new layer and create a mask with this selection. Finally, fill the layer with a very pale light blue color. I feel that using a mask here allows us to fix any mistakes much easier and also be more consistent with the color. All right, we have our base ready to go. Now it is time to start adding the contents. When there's many final image results in the same file, I like to create folders for each of these images. You can name them whatever, but I usually go with numbers of a sequence. For the first one, we're just going to delimitate the site using a pen tool. Here I'm free drawing it, but you should use your site documents to have it very precise. Then change the width and line type accordingly. You can also add a slight shadow to it using the layers blending options. By right clicking, you can copy the shadow effect from one layer and paste it on the other. All right, that's it for the first one. Now for the second one, we can add our project. Scale the same way we did with the line PDF. Now, if you analyze Big's diagram, you spot that they usually have the interage with a shadow and a very thin contour lines, but the main building, the actual project, has a contrast in terms of the appearance. Plus, it also has a thick stroke around it. We can duplicate this shape to our next volume and using the A shortcut, which stands for Direct Selection Tool, we can grab the top nodes and move up. Perfect. Moving on, the third scene will be about the park next to the site. I'm obviously making these up, but adapt these to your site analysis, all right? We're going to use the tree brushes for that but first, let me show you how you can create your own brush. Open up a tree image in a new window, then hit Ctrl U 
and set the lightness down to minus 100. This will create a black silhouette of that tree. After that, go to edit, the fine brush preset. Hit OK, and there you have it. I did this to three different trees so we could have a variation. Also, I'm only using the tree silhouettes because we're trying to achieve a similar result as Big's diagrams. But you can totally skip the Ctrl U tab to have more details on your brush. We're not actually using this, but let me show you something really really useful within the brush tool. Take a look. For now, if you left click and drag, this is what you get. But we can go to the brush settings here and tweak some of these settings to give some jitter to the brush. We can also scatter it a little bit. And then, after all these settings, if we left click and drag it again, we will have a totally different result that can be used in so many ways. Alright, back to the process. Below the trees, we can add an area buffer. So using the ellipse tool, create a perfect circle holding shift. Then we're going to apply the SSR method to transform the circle into isometric. I have a note video on my channel that explains in details how this works. I'm going to leave it in the video description if you want to check it out. It is definitely old, but all the information is there. But basically, you want to hit Ctrl T and change the vertical dimension to 86.602%. Then, shear and rotate it by either minus 30 or 30 degrees, depending on what surface you want to place your shape. After that, all we gotta do is change the stroke, fills and colors to achieve the desired result. Ctrl J to duplicate and lower the opacity as the rings go further. Finally, use the mask to hide areas where the building should be covering the rings. Perfect, number 3 is done. Now let's move on to number 4, which is our last one. This time, I'm going to show how to add arrows to indicate whatever you need to indicate in your project. It can be an axis, a public passage, a pedestrian flow, where the building will eventually expand, the view, basically anything. We first draw the line using a pen tool. Try to stay within the isometric grid, which is 30 degrees. I like to align with something that is on the image. For instance, I'm using the building as a reference. Or you could draw everything flat on the screen and then apply the SSR method to the whole group. It is totally up to you. Then add the arrow and use the same technique to transform it into isometric. I'm using this bright red color as an accent just like in Big's diagrams. When you have one side done, you just gotta duplicate it and mirror it vertically and horizontally using the transform box. Again, use a mask to make this arrow go behind the building. Then duplicate and mirror the whole group to create this intersection. Okay, that's it for the fourth diagram. But before we compose the layout over Illustrator, let me show you another arrow that is commonly used in Bix diagram which is this one right here. And they usually have an opacity gradient that can be achieved by adding a mask and using the gradient tool. Remember that erasing most often isn't the best solution, so use masks whenever possible. Awesome, that is it guys. Now save it all in JPEG image format and I'm going to choose Illustrator to create the layout. But you can use whatever software you like to use in my honest opinion, I feel that InDesign serves me better for things that have multiple pages and Illustrator when I'm creating contest boards, final thesis boards and these kinds of layouts. But feel free to do it even in Photoshop if you'd like to. The secret about the layout is that you need a title that is all caps and usually bold, then a brief explanatory text about the image. Go minimal on this layout and let the diagrams speak for themselves. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, 
The video isn't about copying someone else's style, but more so like learning from the ones that have already succeeded. As always, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, comment down below, I'll be happy to help. And I'll see you over the next video. Bye!